Hi, Attorney Rylas Dana here. Thank you for joining us for our Loss of a Loved One Guide. So here you'll find some information. You can see there's a PDF that you can download with some practical information on some things that need to be done. Also, give us a call at any time. If it's after hours or on the weekend, just go ahead and leave a voicemail. We'll give you a call back during business hours. Uh, we're here to help you, here to answer your questions. Um, any questions, concerns that you may have, our paralegals may be able to answer those or they'll get you scheduled with a meeting with myself or one of our other attorneys. So let's get into some practical information, things that you can do uh, after the loss of a loved one. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. Okay, so first thing you need to do, you, you saw in the steps here, step one is, is grieve. That's a very important part of this process. Understand that it's it's hard enough, the legal things that we're dealing with is, is hard enough, but then throwing the emotion of a loss of a loved one makes things that much harder. So just be conscious of that as you're going throughout this process. Um, people heal differently, they grieve differently. So your, your siblings or the other beneficiaries may be experiencing something different. Okay, so what I want you to do, step one, is to find the players. We're gonna go over some vocabulary terms here. So decedent is the person that's passed away. The fiduciary, that's who's in charge. We use this green visor to show the fiduciary. So if there's a last will and testament, the person in charge of the will is a fiduciary. If there's a trust, the person in charge of the trust is a fiduciary. Beneficiary, who gets the stuff? We use this hand to show the beneficiary. There could be multiple beneficiaries. So what is an estate? Is it a large house? Well, that's not what people are referring to when they mean estate planning. What they're talking about is everything a person owns, whether alive or dead. So all the assets owned by a deceased person are considered to be part of their estate. So that's an important part of the lingo. So the assets in the estate. Fiduciary is a person to whom property or power is entrusted for the benefit of another. So we use this hat to show the bookkeeper. So the last one, test, testament is a document where it designates a personal representative who's in charge, guardian if there's minor children, and the beneficiaries who gets the stuff. In order to activate the personal representative and the guardian, to activate those powers there, some court involvement is required. So what is probate? It's the legal process to change, to change title of an asset out of the name of the deceased. So this example here, Mrs. Estate passes away. He's the beneficiary of her life insurance. So he collects that without probate. They're joint owners on the house, so that also goes to him. But this bank account is still in the name of Mrs. Estate, who is deceased. So it's said to be part of her estate. In order to collect this, we look at her will, see who the personal representative is, see who the beneficiaries are. And then after probate, the personal representative gets appointed. Several steps they go through, lots of time. And then eventually they can collect that account through probate. So what do you do if you're the fiduciary? You wanna figure out what the assets are in the estate. Is there, is there life insurance, retirement accounts, bank accounts, real estate? Figure out what's out there. And then you wanna figure out what's controlling these assets. So things like retirement accounts, like 401ks and IRAs, those typically have a beneficiary listed. If there is a beneficiary listed, that's gonna be controlling. If there's no beneficiary listed or the beneficiary is deceased, then this asset is part of that person's estate. This house is showing is titled in the name of the deceased person. So again, part of their estate. And there could be a trust and assets titled in the name of the trust. So figure out what assets are out there and then figure out what controls these assets. Are they controlled by the trust? Are they part of the estate? Or is there a beneficiary designation contract that says who these accounts go to? Okay, so if it's in the estate, then the last will and testament is gonna be controlling. 
Now, what if there is no last will and testament? If there's not a last will and testament, then you have what's called the laws of intestacy to determine who the beneficiaries are of the estate and also determines who has priority to serve as a personal representative. So you want to look up laws of intestacy in your state. Um, we have a link to it on our website as well. You can find um, the Arizona ones. Okay, so intestate succession will control who has the authority. If there's a trust, that's going to name the beneficiaries and who's in charge under the trust. So if you're the executor, if you're named as the trustee or the personal representative in the will, then what you need to do is you need to safeguard the assets and start an account. So control everything in the estate, protect it, and also leave records of what you're doing. And then collect assets. So it's the job of the executor to collect the assets of the estate. See if there's any valid debts of the estate. Uh, try to negotiate with those debts. That's the service that we provide in negotiating with creditors. You do have to satisfy creditors if you do a probate, but that doesn't mean pay them in full. That just means get them to agree to uh, waive their claim. And then um, after they determine and pay valid debt, then the executor needs to share an accounting with all the beneficiaries, let them know what's going on, make sure that they agree, and then make a distribution. So the, um, if you're the trustee or the personal representative, your job, the details of your job are gonna be in two places. One, in the legal document itself, so the, your instructions are what, what the trust says. You got to follow what the trust says to do or in the last will and testament. Uh, and then the other place that contains your role is the laws, the Arizona laws, which define your duty, uh, the fiduciary duty. So basically, whenever you're managing money for the benefit of another, you have that fiduciary duty to make the best use of those assets. So if you're the executor, we always recommend reaching out to an attorney just to make sure that they'll, they'll help you do your job to make sure that you don't get sued by your siblings. Okay, so what do you do if you're a beneficiary? So you've seen the will, you've seen the trust, you're someone who's entitled to receive, but you're not the one in charge. So then what do you do? Number one, ask for a copy of the legal documents. So you wanna see what you're entitled to, so you ask for a copy. Now, if you're listed as a beneficiary, they have to provide a copy of the will to you and a copy of the trust if you're listed as a beneficiary. If you are not listed as a beneficiary in that will or trust, then they do not have to send you a copy of it. Um, only the beneficiaries are entitled to see that document. So people commonly ask, well, you know, my sibling or so-and-so, they say I'm not included in the will and they won't give me a copy. What do I do next? Well, what you can do, it basically is litigation is your next option. All right, after you've gotten a copy of the legal documents, then you can ask for an accounting. Make sure they're showing you what assets are owned by the trust or the estate and that they're, they're forthcoming with the information. If they're doing those two things, so if you're a beneficiary, and the trustee and personal representative, they've given you a copy of the legal documents, they've given you an accounting, be patient. So I say that as long as they're moving forward and making some progress, uh, give them some time to get their job done. Now, people will commonly ask, they say, well, how long should it take? How long should it take to settle an estate after someone passes away? There's no hard line number. And a lot of times a trust or a will, it'll say to distribute as soon as reasonable and practical to do so. Now this is gonna depend on the types of assets in the estate and some other factors. So, you know, if it's, if there's things like real estate that need to be sold and difficult assets, that's gonna take some time. But if it's just bank accounts and a trust and the trustee already has the authority, that shouldn't, that shouldn't take very long to make a distribution. Okay, so I, number three was be patient, but four is consult the lawyer to advise of your rights. So if it looks like there's any funny business going on, you know, if you've been patient long enough, 
and you still don't have answers, then consult an attorney to see what's going on. They can help advise you of the situation. So I hope you found this information to be helpful. You can reach out to us for help as well. Give us a call at 480-924-4424 or send us an email or check out our, our website for further information. Thank you.